This lesson is about work and power. We've previously talked about two types of energy, kinetic and potential, but we never talked about where that energy comes from. An object has kinetic energy because it's moving, but where do they get it? The answer is work. An object has energy because someone or something does work on it. When you do work on an object, you lose energy. You get tired, you have to eat something. When work is done on you, you gain energy. Work is being done on you when you are on an escalator or in an elevator. Let's take a look at an example. Here we have a mass attached to a rope that's hung over a pulley. This person is going to pull down on the rope, lifting the mass into the air. The person lost energy. They are tired. They have to go have a snack. The mass gained energy. Right here, it specifically gained gravitational potential energy. So clearly, work is related to energy. In fact, work equals the change of energy. We can write that as W equals delta E. One way that we can calculate the work is to uh, find the product of the force that's being exerted on an object and the displacement of the object. Uh, and it's really important that the force and the displacement have to be in the same direction. So let's say if there's an upward force on an object, but the object is moving horizontally, that upward force is clearly not responsible for the horizontal motion. The other equation we can write for work is that work equals force times displacement. Let's take a look at that example again. So this person exerts a downward force of 25 newtons on the rope, which through the pulley, exerts a 25 newton force up on the mass. And if the mass has a displacement of 0.8 meters, we can find out how much work was done. So work is force times displacement. 25 newtons times 0.8 meters gives us work of 20 newton meters. And I think we've seen before that a newton times a meter is the same thing as a joule. So this person did 20 joules of work lifting the mass. A common phrase that you'll see is work done against, and then they'll name a force that you've learned about before. And I want to give you an idea of what this means so that you're not confused. So in this example that we've been looking at, work is being done to overcome the force of gravity. We're trying to lift this mass opposite the direction that gravity acts, and so this would be called work done against gravity. Uh, in a different example, Right? This person is trying to move this box, and the reason it's difficult is because of friction. So it, in this case, the person is doing work to overcome the force of friction, and so this would be called the work done against friction. We'll talk about that more a little later, uh, but I wanted to introduce you to this phrase. This brings us to power. Power can be defined as the rate at which work is done. Now I'm going to show some equations, but you don't have to write anything down until we have a big equation in a box. So we could write this simply as power equals work divided by time. But we've already seen that work is equal to force times displacement. So we could rewrite this as power equals force times displacement over time. And if you think back way back to the beginning of September, we know that D over T is the equation for average velocity. So we could replace d over t in the equation with v bar, which would give us power equals force times average velocity. And so we can put all of these together. That's what you should write down. Power can be work over time, it can be force times displacement over time, or it can be force times average velocity. Let's take a look at an example of a power problem. And why not go back to that original example? So this person is lifting the mass 0.8 meters by exerting a force of 25 newtons. And let's say that this person does this in 15 seconds. We want to know what power the person has while lifting. Based on the givens that we can see here right on the screen, we know force and displacement and time. So let's use the power equation. Power equals force times displacement over time. We can plug in the 25 newtons, the 0.8 meter, and the 15 seconds. And we can find that the power is 1.3 newton meters per second, which we know is joules per second. So we have a power of 1.3 joules per second. For some reason, scientists decided that joules per second should have a special name. 
So this unit, joule per second, we're going to call a watt. And you've definitely heard of watts before. Uh, light bulbs are measured in watts. 60 watts means that light bulb uses 60 joules of energy every second. So finally, we'll say that the power of this person was 1.3 watts.